All right. So, yeah, we're back. Um, that, there should be nothing to change on your screen, but yeah, we're back. Let's uh, let's dive into this. So we're gonna we're gonna pose this guy just a little bit more, and we're um, we're gonna kind of you know pose the sword in the way that it's supposed to be, All right? So with something like this, I'm looking at his hand right here. So his hand is kind of like like holding it like this, and what usually helps you understand that is if you do the action yourself, so you'll know how you need to rotate um, the hand or the sword, right? Like he's holding it like this, all right? So to do that, I'm just gonna grab our, our character. And if you've been following, you know that we threw a symmetry modifier on this guy, all right? Now he's symmetrical and everything, and I don't really want him to be symmetrical anymore. So I'm just gonna throw an edit poly modifier on uh, on my stack like so and now I've got my edit poly modifier and I'm, I can select these verts right I can select these verts right just scroll down and uh, I'll try to I'll use my soft selection so I'll use soft selection here and then just because what I wanted to do is it's a it's kind of affect most of the arms so I'm just going to increase my fall off a little bit I don't want it to uh, as you can see you can see that it's this this rainbow threshold is kind of it's going uh, as far as you know the body and what would happen is if I moved it you'll see that the body moves as well but I don't want that to happen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on edge distance and it's gonna base my selection now on the distance between the last verts that I selected so that I'm not affecting that uh, that body as well. And, you know, I just want it so that um, his hand uh, and a little bit of his forearm, right, rotates a little bit to be able to grip that sword in that manner. We have, we're not going to pose the fingers or anything, uh, you know, just yet. I don't know if you guys are going to even be here for that, but um, we're going to increase just the edge distance quite a bit, right? So now it's going up his uh, arm past his elbow, through his uh, biceps and tries and maybe even a little bit of the shoulder right so uh, now I can if I rotate you'll see that let's grow this a little bit let's increase our edge distance increase I'm just gonna increase the fall off now so now it does kind of go in there it's gonna rotate a little bit like so I'm gonna reduce this fall off now so that now I'm just working with, right? All right, because you can see, we can see his knuckles, right? If you look right here, I can see his knuckles a little bit. And right now from the back, I can kind of see his knuckles. So this would be a better placement for, uh, you know, and these are very subtle things. These aren't like monumental, you know, like, and his pose is relatively chill. Right, it's a very, very chill pose. He's just kind of standing. He's got his his shield brandished on one hand and his uh, his sword in his right. So, and they're kind of relaxed too. So it's kind of like a relaxed pose. So this isn't a pose that you know it's like some dynamic like the guys like in the eye, you know trying to poke a monster in the eye. So it's none of that. It's just a simple hands twisted a little bit, arm you know shield on one arm, and it you know. It's something that you guys can easily kind of grasp and, and, and do stuff like this. So now I can grab our uh, our sword and just kind of just kind of move it in place. So and as you guys can see, I use my hotkeys like like these are my bread and butter, and these aren't my personal. These are the hotkeys that are inside of 3ds Max, right? They're just they're just uh, mapped to W, E, and R on your keyboard. W, E, R. W, E, R. W, E, R. Right? Practice that like your life depends on it. At, at the very least, if you don't get anything out of this class, W, E, and R. Use those three. Your move, your rotate, and scale. In any 3D program you learn, learn the move, rotate, and scale uh, hotkeys for sure. For sure. These, th these are like basic entry level uh, you know, hotkeys to kind of know. And I'm going to rotate this guy a little bit forward like so. And then just, you know, place it in his hand. 
looks like so. All right. It's kind of rotated a little bit. All right, see right now, it's rotating it based on the view. And sometimes I want to rotate it on its local axis, right? So now if I'm rotating it on its local axis, I can then place it exactly where it needs to be. All right. And you know, if you guys wanted to take this a little bit further, right? You guys want to take this to the next step and you did want to pose the fingers, you would just use that same method that I was showing you to just kind of grab the fingers, right? I would grab these verts at the bottom here and using my edge distance, right? Using my edge distance, let's re redu reduce this guy a little bit like so. I would then use that to uh, to kind of start rotating and and moving this guy uh, in place All right I can just and then, you know reduce this reduce the fall off a little bit Right. The, the the misconception is that this stuff is some kind of like brainiac super like dude this this stuff is you're grabbing points and you're rotating them and you're moving them around you know you're you're doing very 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 um, simple you know simple actions that over time lead to big changes right it just takes a little bit of patience and you know, just kind of trying to figure out like the things you can do, the things you can do, can't do, and and putting that stuff together. So, I'm just gonna re remove that guy. All right. And what I'll do is like, as you can see, he's got like he's kind of he's kind of got that one relaxed, uh, one relaxed finger as well. You know. So on the on the blade. I'm just gonna reduce this. I'm gonna turn off uh, I'm gonna turn that off for a second just so I can then and this is low poly enough that you can still work with this at this level. Right? The problem is sometimes you'll get into models and you'll try to move them and, and you you're not gonna be able to make these these kind of changes because you've gone too far and you've you've turned on the subdivisions like really really high or something like that and now you can't work with it the way you need to right the reason I can't work is because I'm only working with four polygons or six or eight polygons at a time and I'm using those to to the you know to the max and I'm maximizing the use of those guys so Right, and it helps to have a basic understanding of anatomy, right? And if you don't, look at your own hand. These are things that you have. Like, how would your hand look holding holding that sword hilt? Right? How would you know things like that? That that kind of that'll kind of help you. So, all right, and. And one of the things about 3D as a medium is you got to find out it has to look good from all sides. Like as you guys can see, I was I was working so deep and intent on here that I neglected some of these areas. And now I've got like some weird, you know, knuckle issues going on right here. Right. And that's the that's the thing that will get people about 3D is you kind of have to work uh, a little see through ish, a little like, OK, you're you're imagining what's happening on the other side and, you know, that that'll definitely help you with 2d as well and 2d and vice versa right they, they kind of help each other in the sense that it helps you be able to understand what's going on with an object or what's going on with a model you know so
always, always, always make sure you're, you're rotating your model. You're making sure that the changes you're making look good on whatever side uh, that you're that you're looking at it from. You know, and that's the idea. So I can just, I'm just gonna rotate this guy a little bit more. So we've got that kind of, you know, just at a, at a good, good standing point right now. What I'd like to address now is, uh, you know, just some of these arrows. So let's just, you know, and the way I did them last time was just lines. But, you know, I'll show you another way if you want to do those arrows and block them in. A cylinder, reduce the radius, and if I, you know, E, I can rotate, just A, to rotate it 90 degrees, and if you guys see that I work a lot of the time when I'm modeling stuff, I work in like 90 degree angles, or you know, whenever I rotate anything, just because whenever you're working on something straight, you're not going to get weird things happening to them. So what I mean by that is if I'm working on this cylinder, right, I'm not going to rotate it like halfway here and then start working on it from this, this angle. The reason is because I'm, I don't know exactly how it's going to react whenever I do something like that. So if I go to the, my top view, you know, I can start making weird things happen and it, it won't do what it needs to do. It won't do what it's supposed to do. But if I make sure that whenever I, uh, whenever I do my rotations or anything like that, I make sure that it's, it's, you know, rotated exactly 90 degrees so that all the lines are straight, right? You're just going to save yourself a lot of headache, right? As you can see, like I, I tried to turn it and because like my eye is off a little bit, right? It's not on a straight line anymore. You can see that right here, right? It goes here and then it's, it's down here. So I always want to make sure that, right? And then not look, me trying to make it straight or if I want to bake it, or, now I can't even get it back straight. So whenever I work, right? Whenever I work, I like to work in those 90 degree angles all right just a little just a little lesson a little fyi for you all right so now let's uh, i'm gonna go back in my front view f and z right f gets me to my front view z allows me to zoom in to whatever it is that i'm doing right and i've still got my grid in the back boom Hit G, right? G gets rid of my grid. Now I can work with my uh, my arrow here. Okay. And if you've been you know working with us so far, you should know that um, you know all of these pieces we've gathered reference and we've thrown those references inside of one of the chats it's called references for the assignment you can find it there and all of these references that you know everybody's kind of helped us gather uh, for these different assets are all thrown in here for this project so when we start modeling these individual pieces themselves we've got a good uh, a good set of references to, to work from so let's just uh, let's place this guy in here I'm just gonna make this. I'm gonna leave this guy like this. I'm gonna shift gra drag an instance. It's gonna shift drag that instance in there. And then rotate it like so, right? I'm rotating this one, but I can still work on this one, right? So now I can, I can just hit align, and I'm just gonna align it to the center of this guy right here. 
All right, if you guys didn't catch that, let me show you guys what I did. All right. So I've got my object here and I'm like, man, this thing is not aligned to this. I want to I want to bring it in here and I don't want to spend my time like trying to rotate and put all this stuff in place. And I know where I want it to get to. What I can do is I can click this guy right here. This is the align tool. I'm just going to click this align tool with my object selected and then I'm going to select whatever I want it to align to. It's going to give me a few options. It's going to say, hey, do you want to align it to the current object's minimum, center, pivot, maximum? And the target object's the same ones. What I want is I want it to be centered, right? And also, I kind of do want it to align the X, the Y, and Z axis for me, right? I can also, if I want, match the scale. I don't want to do that. But this is okay with me. Now I know that it has the exact same orientation, right? And if you guys can see, it's coming straight out of the center, right? So this is another tool in your in your little Batman gadget. I'm trying to give you guys a little, you know, by the end of this, you guys are going to have a, a little Batman uh, utility belt that you guys can throw out these little these little gadgets and gadgets that you, you know how to do uh, in here. So all, like I'm holding out Alt, right click, and now I can change it to local alignment, right? And then pull this guy up like so, all right? And the cool thing is I can, you know, just to show you why it's cool to have an instance is I can now select this guy. And if I know, wow, this is way too long for the, uh, for the arrow in here, all I have to do is now reduce the height on this guy, right? If I reduce the height, it reduces that one subsequently. So these are these are cool little tricks that you guys you know should start having in your uh, in your quiver. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys got that uh, to start combating some of the issues that you're going to run into uh, when you're modeling this stuff. All right. So we've got our bow in here. We've got our arrow. Uh, we've got our sword shield. And I think that's pretty much all of it. All right, the next part would be this sword, but I'm going to save, uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to save that to the end. Um, I'm just going to use this sword. I'm just going to shift drag for our, uh, for our title sword. I'm going to hit Alt and X to X-ray these. All right, this just turns these into X-rays. Now, you guys are getting a lot of tips today. Alt and X, X-ray, X-ray mode. Boom, Alt X, Alt X, all right, X ray mode. So now I can pull this guy forward, F on the keyboard, hit E to rotate 90. Let's make sure it's a, it's, a, it's an instance, but I'll convert it and make it a, a copy. Make sure I rotate it 90 degrees. All right, what I really want to do now is this Alt X isn't working. I still can't see what I'm trying to do, so I'm just going to hide that selection for myself and then pull this guy here so as you guys can see I started off using the same base mesh from the sword that we all, we've already made now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to augment this to match what you're trying to do right click this guy convert this guy to an editable poly throw on alt and X hit one on the keyboard and now I'm I've, I'm already I'm already running right four on the keyboard boom Select that Alt, drag right here, drag this uh, rectangular marquee to deselect the bottom. What that does is now I've only got my selection at the top. All right, now let's go back into F, Z, right? F and Z zooms in, shift, drag like so, shift, drag like so. What that's doing, let me control Z that so you guys can see that again. Shift, drag up like that, and then shift, drag up I'm creating new geometry now if I select this guy and I hit R on my keyboard I can scale it out but no I can't yet because well I don't have anything supporting these bottoms so if I hit L alt and one on my keyboard right if you guys don't, don't have your setup to alt one I'm just gonna throw on this swift loop right here it's in your modeling tab right here if you guys don't see it you guys might need to drop it down right 
You guys might need to drop it down. If you guys don't see it, it's this guy right here. Drop it down. And it these are your modeling tools. These are this is your modeling toolbar right here. And in this modeling one, the first tab over here, you're gonna hit on Swift Loop, boom, dropper like so, drop it like so, and then boom, hit four on my keyboard, W to get my selection tool out. Select this guy, hit R on the keyboard to scale it out. I'm just gonna scale it out like that. And now I'm gonna scale it on the Y. And then I can do hold down shift, boom, the same, scale it down, right? And now it's still super boxy, right? It's super boxy, I haven't even, you know, but it's an outline, right? And you guys understand that. So now I'm just gonna use the, the, the same things that I got, all right? I'm gonna actually, let me show you, you know, another trick that I like to do, I, I try to tell y'all, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to this stuff. As easy as I can make this stuff for myself, the better it is for me. The better it is going to be for me. So I'm going to take this middle uh, middle vert right here. I'm going to ring it on my on my keyboard. I have it mapped to the right uh, right arrow. But if you guys are looking for it, it will be in your selection set right here. Ring. Right click on the in the viewport connect options I've connected it by one which gives me this this uh, this line right down the middle I'm gonna hit the check mark right there four on my keyboard I'm just gonna select one whole side of it all right because that's all I need is one side I'm gonna delete this guy boom all right the reason is as you guys should know by now we're gonna use the symmetry modifier right on the X nope no nope y-axis to simulate what we need so now I can go back I'm you know if you guys don't if you guys go back under your stack and you want to see what your previous stacks or your 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 stacks on top are doing you want to kick click on this thing that looks like a little beaker right um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show you the end result so I'm gonna click that now I can see what the end results gonna be now I can hit one on my keyboard drag this guy down like so all right so now i want to make uh make our new sword resemble that just a little more so now to do that i'm just going to select these guys and what you'll see is now when i do something on one side it also is done to the other side which is super cool which is what we want so we can then start, you know, start dragging these guys like so. Boom. All right, I'm just gonna try to hit all of these markers that I see. Just like that, boom. Just like that, boom. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just, mo I'm moving around the, the stuff we already have there. I'm not, I haven't added any new geometry. Just moving around the stuff that we already have uh, in place, right? And this, these are some of the things you'll learn is you've got to just kind of, you know, what, what I used to do when I was when I was still learning this stuff is whenever I went anywhere, I would look at different objects and I'd be like, that's how I would model that, or that's the that's the amount of loops I would need to get that shape or that chamfer right or the the the, the topology of things, right? Until you start going into stuff and you looking at how the, the things in the world and how their topology is gonna be and how you know that that's when you're gonna start understanding, okay, this is this is really what it takes to uh, to really understand this stuff. So now I'm gonna add some geometry here. So let's hit F on my keyboard again. And this guy kind of goes out like that. And I'm gonna hit Alt. Nope, I'm gonna hit the Swift loop again. I don't wanna show you guys um, my way right now, but I'm gonna hit the swift loop again and I'm gonna throw a loop like right here. And then I'm gonna hit four on my keyboard and then select this bottom uh, edge right there. And now I can just shift drag, shift drag, and then shift and drag. Hit one on the keyboard, right, like so, boom, right? Grab this guy like so, boom, and then boom, like that. Right. And one thing you want to make sure is that you're in these orthographic views because it makes your selection 
you know, make, makes selecting things just a little bit easier for yourself, right? Because if you're in this view and you have to select these two, you're more apt to select this or, you know, accidentally not select that and you're moving it and you don't realize that you're doing that. So I like to go into my orthographic views and when I say orthographic, I mean your front, your back, your side, your left and your right view. When you go into your perspective view, this is no longer an orthographic view because what it's doing is it's taking all of your lines and saying it's going to approximate it and give you some kind of distance viewing based on uh, whatever you have said into your perspective camera or your perspective view. What it usually defaults to is what the human eye defaults to is, uh, which is I think 35 millimeters or something, 35 or 45 millimeters or something like that, which is the cone of vision or our cone of angle uh, that we see in. And when it, when it does that, it's showing us how we would perceive it in our natural world. But if we go into our front view, you'll see that what it shows us is an orthographic view. So let me select this object to, let me make a, a, a box to uh, illustrate my point a little bit better. All right. So this is an orthographic view. As you guys can see, it's an orthographic view, right? This is true to how this object is. In, uh, without any kind of camera perspective, anything, this is what your object looks like. But if we throw on the perspective view, you'll see that our lines can now start to recede into the perspective. So you would imagine there's a horizon line, and if you took this line all the way back, it would meet somewhere at that horizon line. But in orthographic, right, which is you on your keyboard, this view, this same view, right? You can see that no matter where these lines go, they will never, ever, ever, ever meet, right? Because in real life, if it's a true box and these lines are perpendicular or parallel to each other, they're never going to meet. But in perspective view, well, this is the movie magic. They will meet, all right? So that's pretty much where we're going to end for, uh, for today. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys uh, got a little a little bit better information out of this and uh, you guys are seeing how some of this stuff is working. We've got, uh, you know, we've got a lot of stuff in here already for for our model. So, yeah, this thing is moving right along. This is a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool project. And, you know, as usual, we'll just move it up. Alt X to show it. And then maybe we'll deal with the text and I'll show you guys how I'd approach text like this if. Uh, the client didn't send you uh, maybe like a PNG or a, an outline or an SVG or an AI file of your your uh, text. I'll show you how I would go about creating it uh, depending on what situation you're in. You might you might need to show it in you know in 3D you know uh, or you might just show it in 2D you know and uh, that's something that you guys should start getting familiar with and, and start understanding that. There's a lot of different ways to, to do this, do this job and do it effectively. You know, the, the, the main point is getting your client what they need, right? Nobody, care, nobody cares how you get there. Nobody's going to be like, did you use Maya or did you use Blender? Or did, no. Did you get the job done? That's all that matters. That's, your paycheck isn't going to say used Maya on it. No, no, no. It's going to say your name. It's going to say you did the job and that's it, right? So focus on the task. Focus on how you know how you get there what your your tools are what you need to do to get to you to the final uh result that you need all right uh let's see yeah so that's it uh you guys attempt all this stuff and i think next week we're going to start working on our coin which is your first uh big uh big assignment which is that that coin uh, the crate and then the barrel. So we're going to do all those three. And if you know, you guys know the deal with those, you guys have to do those. This is your classwork and you guys make it through as much as you can, because a lot of this stuff that I'm going to be teaching for, uh, the Zelda poster is going to be a little, a little con, you know, complex in the sense that, um, it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of you, you know, really trying really hard to, you know, keep up and get along with it because I understand, you know, that it just seems like a lot. I promise you, I promise you, once you understand the stuff that I'm saying, you're like, oh, okay, that's, that's all I got to do. Boom, 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 do it. 
boom, 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 you know. But until you get to that point, I feel like I just got to bombard you with all this stuff and then you guys will be uh, be much, much better at it. But uh, that's it for uh, for that.